All right, this is a topic on potential energy. This is our topic seven. It's the third um, subject in this four subject unit we're going through. And we're gonna build on the idea of work and energy and observe how lifting objects creates the, and this is our keyword, potential to do work. Uh, vocab, uh, gravitational potential energy is what I'm gonna have you guys saying a lot. There's actually lots of different types of this but we're going to specifically focus on, focus on potential energy from gravity. Gravitational potential energy. And a little bit in this new law, conservation of energy, which some of you are familiar with. Some maybe not. This page is blank. Okay, so uh, this is potential energy. It's topic 7. And this will be on page 24. And uh, the question is, the first thing, you don't really have to write any of this, but we just want to review this kind of keyword. And it's, it's what does potential mean? Uh, you might have heard this word a lot. I have so much potential. Well, then why don't you ever do anything? Oh, I don't want to use it up. So potential is this idea that high school kids hear this a lot because you're like, you're being asked to think about what are you going to do with the rest of your life? You have all of this potential. Let's unleash it. Parents are always like, you've got to get the most out of your potential. Or at least um, the ones on TV are. <laughs> and there are also some things with potential energy. This would be some things, potential energy examples. Seeds have like potential to become a tree. right? There's like some seed nest stuff in here and some vitamins and protein for the plant to do its initial growth. But it's not a tree yet. That's potential. Batteries have potential energy. Now they don't do there's nothing happening, but if you put a battery in a toy, you can turn on the toy. But a battery in itself has potential. It's just not doing anything yet. Gasoline has potential chemical potential energy in gasoline. Right? This is energy within the chemical structure of gas that can, when sparked, it can turn an engine. And finally, what we're talking about is potential energy in falling objects, or actually about objects about to fall, is potential energy from gravity. So the energy gravity gives things as they can, say, go down a slide. All right, so here's your first vocab word. Gravitational potential energy is the energy stored in a body due to gravity based on its position. So it is energy stored due to gravity based on its position. So it's kind of three things. So it, first thing is your formula. Potential energy equals mass times gravitational acceleration, which is 9.8. We call this small g times its height in meters. And it's actually, we're going to see in a moment, it's related to force times distance. Um, so let me just add these first here. We all call for PE, potential energy, and sometimes you can give it this. Gravitational equals mass times gravity times height. Gravitational acceleration. And they're directly related. If you have more mass, the object will have more energy if it falls. And if it goes higher up, it'll have more energy when it falls. So they're directly related. Now let's look at the relationship due to work. Now, remember when we were talking about work against gravity? Work equals force times distance. But when you're working against gravity, force really equals mass times 9.8 times distance. And that's actually the same thing as giving it potential energy equals mass times gravity times how high it is. So it's the exact same formula. So this just goes to show that how much work you do is how much you change the potential energy of an object. It's the relationship between work and energy one more time. This is why this unit kind of flows really nice, because it's often the same idea over and over again. 
So if you know how to solve for work against gravity, then you already know how to use this formula, and you can probably finish this topic right now. For example, draw this. This is the only example on this page. So draw this nice with some words, some space to write. What is the difference between the potential energy of these two objects? Well, we're going to do object one. Mass times gravity times height. And we'll do it for object two. And then we'll find the difference to answer our question. So we have two times 9.8 times, they're both sitting on a ledge three meters high, uh, let me calculate this thing for me, hold up, 58.8 newtons, or sorry, joules, because this is still a type of energy, and object one equals 20 times 9.8 times three which equals, well, this with another decimal, because instead of 2, we have 20, so 588 joules. So the difference is 588 minus 58.8 equals 5.8. So we have the difference is 529.2 joules. But the moral of the story is, practice this formula. You kind of already know it if you know work against gravity. But now these objects don't have that much energy, but if they were to fall, they could do that much work on an object when it hits it. Does that make sense? It's not actually doing anything, but if it were to fall, it could do that much work as it falls. So that's a connection between you give it work to lift it up, and then you let it fall, and it can do more work as it falls. Work becomes energy, becomes work again. Uh, finally, let's connect these two ideas. What happens to kinetic energy as an object falls, and what happens to potential energy? Well, as an object falls, height goes, it decreases, so potential energy decreases. However, as an object falls, velocity gets bigger. So velocity increases, so as an object falls, potential energy, or sorry, kinetic energy or moving energy goes up. And we have this relationship where as you're losing potential, you're gaining kinetic.